So today we're working on the all track again. Uh, this go around, I'm going to work on making a cold air intake for the all track. And by that, I mean, I'm just going to try and do a new intake tube coming off the turbo and do an actual enclosure around the filter where it actually has a lid and covers everything up. Shh. I'm hoping it's nothing too special, but this is going to be my first go around at like making a template and shit like that. So let's show you the area we're working in. So this is the area that we have to work with. Um, the turbo is under there. Turbo pipe goes just straight or it should be just going straight. What I'm going to try and do is build a plate that goes here and either cuts off right here and build like brackets to hold that up off to the side or I might even consider going further out and having this be under the air box and closing it off over here. I'm probably gonna go whichever way works the laziest <laughs> let's be honest so I'll probably end up just having the relay box sitting out of the enclosure, but have this one in it. So the plan is maybe just have metal going right here, metal going right here, and then build a plate that goes over it. With that, what I'm going to try and do is use this little, well, this just basic cone filter see if it'll fit in that space if not i'll continue using the mushroom i think it's called like a mushroom intake or mushroom filter i'll probably just continue using that but for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just quickly mock up a template and show you guys what i find after or what i decide to go with after so let me get going and this is kind of where we're at. Um, this would sit a little further over. I have this cut to, there we go, to kind of sit like that. Then I theoretically just put a lid over it. Um, it looks like that filter will fit. Um, I'd have to remove some of the ducting down here to make it more, give more airflow. Because I'm blocking off one of the original intake areas. But that leads to that thing right there. So yeah. Um, not too shabby. I mean, it may be a pain in the ass for someone like me to line up the hole with the turbo down there. But we'll see. Um, let me continue mocking up the enclosure. Because I still need to get like a plate at the bottom. To give this something to mount into. I'm not sure if I'm going to completely like. Because you can see down there. And while I would like to consider blocking it all off. There's lots of wires and crap in this area that. I don't really want to mess with at this point. But eh, I'll figure it out. Anyway this sh this should mostly work and even if I decide to seal it up more later having this framework should allow me to just add on to enclose it more so if I ever decide to like okay let me relocate this and relocate that you know it give me the ability while still having something that kind of bolts right in so yeah that's where I'm at let me keep going. So here's where we're at. Got three template pieces. This one goes up front. This one goes at bottom, which goes whichever direction. It'll kind of go like this on the template or on the metal. And the last piece is this that will just kind of go like this. Now, what I need to do 
is actually just tape it onto that, draw out what I need, and get to cutting. So let me draw that out real quick. So here's my template, all taped onto the metal. Down there, I've drawn out a little extended piece I'm hoping to be able to bend and turn into another mount location, like just a bolt down location. In there, you can kind of see it. I have two holes. That's where two other bolt hole in the car already. There's two threaded holes there. And I like to not create more holes in the car. So I'm using those for securing it at the bottom. I'm going to put one over there to secure it on the side. And yeah. So what I'm going to try to do... The more I looked at it, the more I realized that I'm going to use more than one tool for this. But I'm going to try and use that thing. It's just a little sh metal cutter, shears, whatever. Um, I've had good luck doing some things in the past, but I realize there's probably one too many angles on this. Because what I'm trying to do is just cut out this section cut here yoink 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 and then bend it here and here and only weld these pieces together so that way it'll make a box limit how much i have to weld and i figure it probably makes more sense to just bend the pieces together uh, not completely sure how it's all going to work out but i'm going to go for it so, yeah, let's go. So, here it is, all cut out. Hooray! Uh, obviously those shears bent some little areas up. Pretty sure a hammer will help remedy that. But yeah, not too bad. I'm surprised the sh I mean, that's the pile. There's some of the excess metal there. Hoping to use that bigger one as a cover to just go over the top to try and keep more of the hot air from the engine bay out. But yeah, so guess in this next clip you'll see me trying to uh, finesse that metal into a box shape. Let's get going. Next up, we're going to bend the metal. Ooh. Ah. My plan is, since it's two 90 degree bends, I'm going to use this mediocre at best, best workbench assembled by previous owners. Heat up this surface here with a lovely torch and bend it down. That should allow it to bend pretty easy and for me to sh hopefully shape it a little bit. And then rinse and repeat on this angle. So let's get going. Here's where we're at. I just kind of got rolling and didn't film what little bit of progress I made. We've got some ugly welds because I need to clean the surface, but I just wanted to kind of 
get these pieces stuck together and I feel like they're in good enough spot now that I can now try and close this up a little somehow either doing a makeshift like anvil or something just to kind of hammer it and close it up a little but also didn't realize I'd went a little tall on that piece so I'll probably be cutting this off later but let's see how it test fits in the car right now well strike the test fitting I forgot I still got to bend that thing let me do that real quick okay I have it test fit in uh, one thing I noticed so the little lip that I made I'm gonna have to cut this segment out so that way it'll sit a little further back when the bolt hole is right around there so I need to sit there I'll probably have to trim that corner up a little bit because I'm pretty sure that's pressing against the body but overall it fits kind of how I would expect um, let's check this real quick so I did have to take this off to fit this in there I might have to massage this part a little bit oh I'm gonna have to trim that up too so yeah apparently I didn't quite get everything right but better to have to cut twice than cut once too far anyway so I will start trimming this up real quick so here's a little more progress I ended up so I had put this extra lip in before for this bolt hole and due to the fact I couldn't get a solid 90 degree bend with no curvature is pushing this too far out so I just cut it off what I'll use or do is take that metal cut off a little bracket to weld on about where this bolt goes and yeah just drill a hole through that bracket and boom done so yay it's pretty solid in here though let's be honest uh, with that I put on the old part of the pipe and what I'm going to do is measure from that pipe out to you know somewhere around here get a ballpark of how far I need to go and then that way I can cut my three inch pipe that will be just one piece here but also the reason for putting this on is at least what I think will work I'm gonna take like a piece of paper wrap it around here and you know slide it out to meet this then that way I can mark where the opening needs to be for that pipe now I've started thinking I'm like I'll have to probably go a little bigger on the opening to be able to actually install the pipe but yeah I don't know I've got to figure it out because some of the pipes or the pipe I had on here before well whatever you want to call it had the temperature sensor here the intake temperature sensor then for the idle control or the air intake for the idle and then the from the valve cover where I'll eventually add a catch can but if I make the pipe and have those pieces on it I'm not gonna be able to slide like I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get this pipe in there easily so yeah that's where I'm at uh, yeah either a you're gonna get a clip of hey I've done stuff or B there'll be some fast-forward time-lapse whatever coming up so let's get this shit done so there is where I need to make the hole um, I'll probably elongate it out a little bit I'm also going to probably, well, let's just do it now. I need to put the filter, this thing, up against it and find out 
Ah, that could be a problem. I think that filter goes a little low. Well, let's see what the other one does. It's all trial and error anyway. Mushroom filter! Tell me what that looks like. Anyway. Um, okay, well, actually, it's the same issue either way. So, I'll drill out that hole. But what I'll probably end up doing also with it is <coughs> elongating it out. So, along here. So that way the coupler with the pipe can have some flex. <coughs> yeah. But yeah, what I did was I put the pipe on the turbo. Like you saw, wrap paper around it. I was able to get that mark, this mark, and that mark. I then took one of the spare pipes I had. Just kind of lined it up with those three marks so I could then make a circle. So yay! Also, do a quick measurement. 11 inches is all I need for the pipe that I bought. As you can tell from that box, I may have overbought. But anyway, yeah, let me uh, get me a piece of that real quick and start trying to figure more shit out. So, apparently the next step was uh, brute force slash caveman some of this shit. So, the intake tube, which I cut. See? Ooh. I used a Dremel tool that had a nice little metal cutting, grinding, whatever bit on it. And drilled just three little holes where I want the intake... Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Intake temperature sensor. Then uh, the idle air control valve line, and then the valve cover line. I've got little stepper drill bits that I will use to drill those out. But, you know, that was just the byproduct of uh, what I just did. I used that, just a cutoff wheel, to make that circle come out of... The air box. Not as round as it could be, but I did not want to spend 20 something bucks on a cutout wheel meant for metal, or at least that's I think how much Lowe's was, I don't know. But for something I was rarely going to use, I just cut it out with the cutoff wheel, then I took my little baby belt sander right there smoothed out the edges just a little bit and I'm probably I'm either going to keep using the Dremel tool and round that out a little more because I cut it out mostly and then use the current bit I have to open this up a little bit more so as you can see as I just randomly point the camera places while I grab shit So I've got a little bit of room. Hooray. So, I'll smooth that out. Also got the bolt holes for the base drilled out. I still have not done anything for the bracket down here. But yeah, so the next thing I'm going to do is get new fittings for the valve cover and idle air control valve. And look if there's any other bits that I feel like would make my job there a little better that would be usable in the future. Anyway, yeah, I'll be back with more work in a second. So, here is current progress. I got some nylon, oh, there we go, some nylon barb fittings that I cut the ends off that I will JB weld into place there we go uh, both fit I used those same type of uh, fittings I guess on the last intake and they held up fine so I'm going to use them again this time I'll you know do JB weld again to seal them up but then I'll you know I'll sand the pipe and 
paint the whole thing except for the very ends that will then be covered by a hose. I also, from the junkyard, just got a little rubber grommet thing for the intake temperature sensor. I might have to grind the hole out a little more, but that's three-fourths right there. And then, I'm not sure if I covered it. I already put the holes in there, so... Yeah, I guess I'll go test fit real quick and see if I can hurry up and build a bracket for that area. Yeah, let's get going. So, here is the first sort of mock-up that it's actually kind of in place. Let's see if that will even go on there. It should, but whatever. It may, yeah, there we go. So, got the two bolts, or I thought I had two bolted in. I might have to get a longer bolt for that. I may need to along, or elongate out or whatever, open up those bolt holes a little bit to allow the, allow the enclosure to slide back a little. Because we've got some space there. But as you can see, maybe, we've got the three holes there, intake, idle air, valve cover. Um, the three inch pipe is just sitting over the turbo right now, so it will move up just a little bit once it has a clamp on it. And yeah, everything is looking good there. I'm going to trim out some things a little bit and probably fill up that, well, do the little things like make a bracket there and crap like that. But anyway, we're making progress. Hooray! Small update and what I think my next step is. So I've got the bracket welded on here. Let's, yeah, right there. So that will bolt in there. This one will bolt in there. Uh, what I think I'm going to do next is use some cardboard, get this overall outline, but then what I'm going to do is probably make uh, probably like one, two, three, like four tabs to hold a plate right above this. So screw in, screw in all the way around on all four. Then... I'm going to have to figure out if it's going to have any vibration issues or something, or if I'm going to get to tuck in behind here or build a bracket to like screw in there or something. I don't know. I'm still kind of winging it, but that is the current plan. So let me get that done real quick. Don't really feel the need to film it because it's just kind of boring. So, be right back. With a box cutter and an Amazon box, this is what I came up with. Um, fits pretty well around the edges. I mean, probably a little bit of finagling there. But, what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do also is around all these edges, I'm probably going to take like a vacuum hose, cut it in half, or slit it down the middle. Or find something else and put a just like a rubber thing that goes around the edges on the box and on the cover so then that way when I tighten it down there's a little more of a seal that's the idea but now what I need to do turn this into metal and still make the brackets so yeah I guess I'll just keep going hooray
so since I had to put the old intake in be, due to snow and needing to potentially drive this car tomorrow I was able to get my previous you know the reason for doing the cold air intake currently it is about 31 degrees where I live oh, that's not gonna zoom in whatever it currently says my intake temperature is 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit so I am an estimated what is that 47 yeah 47 degrees above ambient temperature you know I'm in the garage so maybe it's like 40 degrees in here either way as you just saw it went up to 80.6 so this is the reason for me trying to make a proper air box to see if I can lower those temperatures whether it offers performance or not I'm just going to guess it does but whether it does or not is kind of irrelevant I just feel like if you're taking in hotter air you're gonna get a little less performance I mean unless you have like some massive intercooler or some bullshit so anyway yeah there's that data uh, hopefully I'll have data to say that, hey, it worked. Hooray! So, here we are about two weeks later. Um, I'd quickly thrown the car back together the way it was before because we had potential snowfall coming and I really didn't want to chance the FRS with non-snow tires in snow. I've driven a little bit in snow with it and it doesn't like it when there's snow actively going on the ground where it's like actually sticking so I didn't chance it put it back together and then you know between back problems being lazy things like that I you know didn't get back around to it um, decided to button up a few things because you saw me assembling with it before fighting with it it there were a few things I needed to clean up. There are still things I need to do. So this is prototype one of what I've done. And there we are. From a distance, I think it looks great. Up close, I, I try not to look that close. Um, so here we are. Um, you may not see it in the camera, but whatever. Uh, I rushed the paint in the cold, and I also ended up with runs. Things didn't quite stick as they should have. I repainted these like a couple days ago. Or just repainted that. The actual pipe going from the turbo to the intake. Also, when I was last putting things together, the bolt that I had welded in underneath this one, it just didn't want to stick. I didn't have the best space to get to it. And I went with fuck it. Because I added vacuum hose here I slit the vacuum hose down the center put it around the sharp edges so that way it won't really vibrate it'll be kind of tight so I'm not too worried about it but I've got four bolts in on the top you can see them underneath I've got one bolt holding the enclosure in back here and one underneath here that used to hold the battery I think it's a battery tray from the old stock setup. Just trying to reuse bolts. I don't really want to drill new things through this chassis. It's, you know, they're rarer cars as it is. Last thing we need is some half-assed mechanic like me fucking with a car that could one day maybe get in the hands of someone who will actually do, like, professional shit with it. But anyway, that's where we're at. Overall, not too bad. Um, the next iteration, I want to put a bracket here to hold this, but I feel like I need to do, do a little more with the wiring to get to run more of where I want it to be. With that, I've also got the, if I recall correctly, this is from the valve cover. I'm eventually going to throw a uh, catch can here. This is for the idle control. You know, so nothing really needed there. Got the temperature sensor for the intake right here. 
it's no longer allowing air to bypass like the old setup I had and I also don't have it kind of on this side which is a bad idea so yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start up the car get it idling uh, get it warmed up a little bit and have you guys see what the intake temperature are, is from it just sitting being in the garage doing nothing special before the car has hit full operating temperature then what I'm going to do take it for a spin let it hit full operating temperature things like that and then let it idle in the garage and see what the temperature is after if I recall I believe I have some footage I'll find out when I edit this of what type of temperatures I've seen before my goal is for the intake temperatures to read closer to ambient than what they were like during the summer it'd be like 70 degrees maybe 80 degrees out I'd be like 120 degrees Fahrenheit for the intake temperature and while I've never dynoed the car I don't know what the you know the difference in horsepower would be or whatever I don't know how much the intercooler is doing because I don't have any output for the in, uh, the temperature sensor at the intake manifold but I feel like I could gain a little bit by not sucking in hot air so you know, get it started get things booted up and show you what the temperatures are okay so here we go again um, I'm going to try and show you information on my stereo and it will probably not show up so I'll end up just vocally saying what is showing up there currently let's see oh there we go it kind of shows up intake temperature 41 degrees the coolant temperature 84.2 it's warming up so whatever vacuum negative or vacuum is 19 so yeah I could gather a little more info but that's all it that really matters so now to take her for well let her warm up take her for a quick spin and see where we end up at so here's where we are right now um, I don't know if it's going to be very readable do 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 anyway says <coughs> uh, says 57.2 Fahrenheit which you know okay that's not horrible we're also pretty much at operating temperature 181.4 I believe the thermostat opens up at 185 so I'm gonna go take her for a quick little spin and see what happens so overall I am actually really impressed with the behavior so far currently after a couple spirited runs of me trying to get my boost controller set to where it was I saw it from idling get up to like 65 uh, degrees Fahrenheit but for the first time since I've owned the car when driving I've seen the temperatures drop pretty significantly which would go with the fact that the air filter is now closed off from the engine bay heat to a degree so currently after some spirited drives things like that I'm at 59 degrees Fahrenheit last time I checked uh, the temperature here via the weather channel was 38 degrees but we're at 192 degrees for the engine uh, 59 still oh 60.8 for the intake temperature so yes I'd like it to get lower but I feel like I'm making progress because I've seen there was this winter or a couple winters ago that it was like 20 30 degrees outside I was getting 80 degree intake temperature 
that's not acceptable. But yeah, making progress. I'm looking forward to making, giving the enclosure another attempt and see if I can get, see if it's possible to get my temperatures closer to ambient all the time. I don't know how possible that is. I might actually have to look and let's see if we can get some lighting here not very good lighting but anyway thank you for watching um if it was useful or you like seeing me screw up whatever works best for you like subscribe thank you for watching have a good day Buh bye bye